Hi guys, welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny, and today we are go we were going to be talking about um, a top or tunic to go with the plinka pants that we made last week. Unfortunately, I am running a little behind. I have taken on a project for my local fabric store, um, Haberman's Fabrics, which is here just north of Detroit in um, a town called Clawson, Michigan. Um, Haberman Fabrics is a store where I've worked for the last several years, uh, first as a sales associate and then as a manager and then as a teacher. Um, I'm currently not working there because all the things that I did for them, which were teaching mostly, um, are no longer uh, going on because of um, the whole COVID situation. So, but I am, I, I did agree to make a, um, a test garment for them for a display in the store. And the dress that they wanted me to make was, coincidentally, a Tina Gibbons dress. And since I'm on a Tina Gibbons jag, that seemed to be appropriate. Um, it is a newer dress from Tina Gibbons called the Elota dress, E-L-O-T-A. So I'm just guessing that it's Elota. Um, again, so the sizes here, this, the sizes, I'm going to give you a quick review of this, this dress. Um, which I'm almost finished with and then I'm just going to give you a really quick tutorial on how I move the sleeves over there It's actually just like a tank top style dress. So I'm just going to move those over a little bit. It's got a very wide neckline um, So let me just give you the rundown on the pattern first uh, Sizes there are no measurements as Per usual, but it goes extra small through 3x and the sizes that coordinates to are us sizes 2 through 24 Tina Gibbons clothes are, are designs are all pretty generous. So, um, according to her chart, a medium is a 10, 12. That is usually what I cut. Um, I believe, like I said last time, I believe I cut a small in the plinka pant and there are a couple of other things that I would cut the small in. Usually what I do is I will take a look at the pattern once it's put together and I will measure it against either another pattern or I'll just take my tape measure and measure out the, um, the actual distances without the seam allowances, which are five eighths in this pattern, um, and see how that how that jives with what I usually wear. Um, most often, I do wear a medium. This dress was no exception. The medium, um, except for one minor adjustment, I feel like the medium was really spot on. Um, I'm going to give you a description here. The Elota dress is a shapely beauty, slight waistline, and curvy skirt. The dress has structure in its vertical seams and has an open neckline that is very feminine. A delightful detail by adding vintage ribbon for a unique finish. Note this dress is not meant to be fitted but has shape to it in all the right places. Fabric choices are for lightweight, it says. Lightweight fabric with a little firmness to it. Cotton, silk organza, silk taffeta, shantung or dubioni, cotton poplin, or light denim, not suited for linen, cotton, voile, velvet, and rayon. Um, fabrics are for 54 to 44, 54 or 44 inches wide, all sizes, four and seven eighths yards, or four and 4.45 meters. Uh, for the ribbon trim, you're starting a half or one and three quarters meters of your trim. And presumably they want it to be 38 millimeters, to four centimeters, I am using a trim that is, I'm making my own, let's go back. So I, uh, the fabric I'm using is a silk dupioni. It's really beautiful. You can see it right here on my back table. Um, it's almost finished, but not quite. It's this beautiful like apricot colored silk dupioni. Um, it is from Haberman Fabrics. My trim is um, a similar color, uh, apricot kind of color, silk organza. Um, I'm folding this over to make ribbon, so it'll be doubled. Um, and I think that's about how wide mine are, so maybe an inch and a half wide when they're finished. You could just do whatever you want, really. I mean, I think on this original picture, it looks like she has like a actual silk ribbon. Um, I'm using a silk organza uh, folded over, but you could use anything. In fact, I'm going to use another one, and I think on the, I'm going to use another, I'm going to make another one, and I think on that one I'm going to use a Petersham ribbon. Anyways, um, so 
it's a pullover dress. There's, there are no um, closures. It does have structure to it. It's a panel dress. It has eight panels, two center front, two center back, and then two side panels on the front, two side panels on the back. Um, all eight of those seams, according to the way they make it, are uh, French seamed and then top stitched down on the front so that they can be a seam detail, which is exactly how I did it. You could, um, as, as an alternative, you could sew them together and serge them off on the inside and not do anything to them. You could um, do regular felt seam on them if you wanted to. Uh, you could really do anything. I love the structure of this dress. It's almost got like a corsety kind of feel to it, although it is not like fitted like a corsety kind of dress because obviously it's a pullover, you're not there, so it can be. Um, the fabric, I think, I also think this would be really beautiful in um, a good like crisp cotton would be really super cool, uh, especially in the summertime. I think the thing that you want to avoid because it has a lot of structure and some of the pieces have a lot of bias to them because of the way they're cut. I think what you want to avoid is anything that's too drapey because it's just going to look like a deflated <laughs> balloon, I think. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful though. This, uh, like I said, this is a newer pattern from Tina Givens. I'll link it below. I think this is also highlighted in the most recent um, edition of her Seychelles magazine, which I've, I will also um, link below because I think for the tunic we make next, we're going to use one of the tunics that's exclusive to that particular magazine. Okay, I think that's it for the for our little intro here. Like I said, I am going to show you really quickly here how I am going to change the straps on this. I did not have time to change the straps. I didn't have time to make a muslin for this. I just worked it up as is, and then I altered the top a little bit to fix the shoulders a little bit. Um, for my next one though, I, I wanna move the straps in about at one inch on either side, so it'll come, come in this way. I, I'm sure there are a number of ways to do that. I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it, and then, um, hopefully <laughs> any luck i'll get this dress finished today and i can show you guys some pictures of the final garment okay so here is uh the side panel of our dress we're cutting four of these it's exactly the same on the front and the back so this i'm going to move the strap but i only have to do it once because the front and the back are the same piece if you're doing this on a um, different pattern that has a separate front and a separate back piece then you'll want to do the exact same thing on both pieces so this is as is. Um, this strap is only as on the pattern. It's only a, a one and an eighth inches. So if I one two three, if I use five eighths inch seam allowance on the neck, then I'm only going to have three eighths of an inch on the armhole. Now I could use the smaller seam allowance on the neck, and I would have a bigger seam allowance on the armhole. But the truth is. I want a bigger, I, I'm going to want a wider strap here because this pattern calls for binding your neckline with binding and then folding the armhole under for a double fold tiny hem. You could probably do like a, a rolled hem on your sewing machine too if you wanted. Anyways, that's what I did on, on the first version. However, I would really like for my next one to put a binding on both the front of both the neckline and the armhole um, and when they're both bound I don't want the um, bindings to overlap at the top of the shoulder so I'm gonna add a half an inch to the width of this strap in addition to moving it over a half an inch so the way I'm gonna do that is first I am going to do this right I am gonna take a piece of paper and I am just gonna trace out my, I'm just putting a mark here at the top, that top of your um, strap is gonna change a little bit, but I'm just gonna trace this out, my whole armhole piece, just like that. Oops. Um, then, before I go any further, I know that I want this to move over this way, a half an inch, so I'm gonna just take my tape measure and mark where a half an inch is on my tracing here, which is right here. That's a half an inch for my strap. 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this off and I am gonna cut it. It doesn't really matter where, I'm cutting it at the neckline because I just feel like that's the easiest place. But I'm gonna do it right here. Um, then, I'm gonna place this right back here where, so it matches up with the original pattern. Mm, it's supposed to match up in the original pattern. There we go. Matches up with the original pattern just like that. And I'm actually gonna just tape that right in place so it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna move this over a half an inch. And that puts it right here. And you can see, because we're moving it, it's changing the shape of this a little bit. That's going to be fine. I mean, it is going to change things a little. That should be even though. Like that. If you are worried that now your strap is going to be too long because of this, this is probably about a quarter of an inch, you can line it up here and st still move it over a half an inch and then trace this out. I'm going to do it this way because it's easy enough to shorten the strap if I need to. That's not going to make that much difference. And you can see I have a half an inch here, which means that I've moved this over this way a half an inch. Um, you just want to be sure that this is even, and I should probably measure that, but I'm not going to. It looks even. I'm going to tape that down just like that. Now, I wanted to add a half an inch to my strap, so I'm actually just going to leave this as is, because that's my half an inch. If you don't want to add a half an inch, if you just want to move your strap, all you would do is place this so it looks like a reasonable curve, which would be something like that. Draw that out. Whoops. Something like that. Draw it just like that. And then you would just recut along this line that we just made. Like I said, I'm not gonna do that because I actually want this extra width here. What I am going to do, however, is fix my neckline, which needs to come back down here to the center where it was before. I'm just laying my French curve there and giving myself a reasonable curve, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to recut this pattern, and it should be good to go. We'll see. All right, guys, so that is it for today, short and sweet. Um, I will see you guys on Thursday when I hope we will be getting to our Tina Gibbons uh, outfit part two. And meanwhile, I'll give you a little twirl in my new loaded dress. Thank you so much for stopping by. All links, patterns, etc. down below. Thanks a lot, guys.